bring you a sense of the progress of the world that is moving from a fixed paradigm that dooms humanity uh, to collapse, uh, possibly extinction, to the new paradigm that embraces rapid change and rapid rates of, of scientific and technological progress. The old oligarchy of a bygone fixed order is at the end of its potential existence as it tries to shut down the changes that must become as part of the universal lawfulness of an anti-entropic universe, a universe that could not otherwise exist without going against entropy, without going against the fixed nature that this oligarchy uh, wishes to impose. In other words, humanity is part of the universe and human creativity is part of the future development of the universe. The universe does not stand still. It is not fixed. It must change to a more active, more complex, and a more anti-entropic uh, speeding up of processes. This was understood as early as Plato. It was also understood by Cusa, and it's also understood by Kepler that a perfect universe is a dead universe. The essential substance of the universe is the potential to become more developed. It's potential. It's not, it's not the matter that, that's the substance of the universe. It's the potential that that matter represents to be transformed in an anti-running down um, manner. This, however, is not the view of Aristotle or of the modern Aristotle who started the Enlightenment, Paolo Sarpi. And uh, nor is it the view of science taught in our schools. Uh, the oligarchy for the, for the last millennium has sought to establish the perfect fixed order. An order that cannot be, it's an order that cannot exist. It's an order that the universe will not allow. Now the consequences of this non-allowance is destroying the authority of the post-World War II system of which, uh, which, is seeking to, which has been seeking to impose a fixed, final fixed order on the human race. The suffering this has inflicted on humanity in the recent de eight decades, the suffering that the transatlantic system has inflicted the prevention of development that could have occurred can only be atoned in a different future that we can now begin to see on the horizon. From that standpoint, from the standpoint of the LaRouche movement in our own society, we are the conceptual power that is articulating and defining the two paradigms. And it is our responsibility to inform the combatants especially those seeking to break out of the old new paradigm, what the issue is and who they really are, not who they might think they are. And this, our ability to create clarity, is the most crucial aspect. The political systems of governments are breaking down in the transatlantic system, as they should. And as the LaRouche movement and I personally have known would eventually occur. That is now occurring. I thought it would occur sooner, but nonetheless it is now occurring. I, don't, I do not want to treat what is going on in the U.S. as a U.S. phenomenon. It is not. So first I want to treat briefly the situation of political breakdown in four of the most developed nations in Europe, the United Kingdom, Germany, France, uh, and Italy. Then I want to deal with the two nations where there is an open, uh, well, those three nations, and then the two nations where there is an open fight for the new paradigm, the United States and Italy. I mean, the United States and Italy. So, United Kingdom, Germany, and France is where the breakdown is taking place, but where there's an actual fight with the potential right now is the United States and Italy. In Great Britain, there is a profound crisis based on the revolt of the British population to the established order. The, the Brexit vote was a result of that revolt. The problem for the city of London financial system is that they must fi financially, uh, 
dissolve themselves from Europe in the hard Brexit, which means they, they, they cease to be as powerful as they are. Whereas in the soft Brexit, which is not what was voted on, they, they can maintain what their dominance over Europe, but at the expense of, of, of surrendering sovereignty of, of the United Kingdom to, to the European Union. And then all the wiggle room they're trying to create. Now, the, the resistance around this is grouped around the emergence of the old labor left around Jeremy Corbyn and some conservatives uh, and conservatives who are anti-Euro nationals. Nothing has been resolved on this. Uh, then you have the, the issue, the, a very crucial issue that people um, have to, we, we haven't really talked about much here, but it's, but um, for fear of being called fascist or for fear of being called racist, not fascist, for fear of being called racist or, or uh, whatever. And that is the, the immigration issue. And um, part of this immigration issue is a byproduct of the irregular warfare that's been run against uh, this, the nations of mid, the Middle East and Africa. And also, as well, an oligarchical effort to break apart the sense of culture and identity and the traditions of particular nations. So like Rome, these, these national traditions on which a society calls upon to mobilize itself in a time of crisis uh, is, is destroyed or weakened. Thus leading to horrendous problems uh, in the large ghettoized, not in, uh, interested in assimilatable groups of hostile to the culture of the host nation. It, uh, often in the past, uh, immigration would come with the idea of being part of the culture. This immigration is hostile to the culture because it is not an immigration based upon, upon the, uh, is, it is an immigration based on, 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 on uh, trauma and, and destruction. This is further exacerbated by the self-hating inf infection of postmodernism that wants to eradicate from humanity the best of Western civilization and sees this influx as a, an ally in the destruction of Western civilization. And they would like to replace that with identity politics and just the reduction of people, of uh, culturalists, to a mob, uh, to, a, to, to an anarchistic um, uh, uh, monad. In France, which is a police state, in reality, the support for Macron and institutions is getting worse. The French police state is probably will probably will keep a lid on things, but this crisis is brewing in France, and there is potential eruptions of violence and and as much greater there because of the brutality of the of the French police state. In Germany, we have the spectacular results of the Bavarian state election, where the ruling party for the last seventy years, the Christian Socialist Union. Uh, received less than 50% of the vote, they received 37% of the vote. This is, this is a shock. This is a profound shock. Uh, the CSU is a pillar of the, uh, uh, sister pillar of the Christian, um, Christian uh, Democratic Union, the CDU of Merkel, and it's part of the group, has always been part of that, part of their uh, faction, and they are currently part of the ruling coalition. Polls show that the ruling coalitions of what would have been previously the three major parties, the CDU, the CSU, and the SPD, or the CD, CDU, SPD, and CSU, uh, that they are now around 39% of the vote, the polls, and dropping. This is, this is huge. These are, the, these, are the gov these are the parties that have been used to being in government. The other parties have... have uh, one of the parties that's growing is, uh, is a right-wing party uh, for Deutschland, for, for Germany, uh, alternative. Uh, alternative for Germany. The other that's growing is the Green Party. So you have the Green Party and, the, uh, and, the, and, and there's hardcore fascist tendencies in both of these parties, uh, in the Green Party and in the other one. Uh, except for Helga and the German industrial networks that are, that are 
Um, uh, there is no clear policy for dealing with Germany's crisis. And the, and the crisis in Germany has made been made even worse by their energy policy. They have abandoned nuclear power, and they're now trying to abandon fossil fuels. The people have were paying the cheapest, now they're paying the most expensive. And it's a real energy crisis. Uh, they're facing, in the, in the near future, brownouts and blackouts and rolling, whatever. This is the most industrialized country in, in, in the world. This is, this is like a bunch of massive lemmings uh, make, trying to uh, rush into to drown themselves in the sea. You know, this is what it's like. This is what these people are like. I can't, I can't figure out what is going wrong with these people. Maybe they have a collective death wish because they are, they've been made to feel guilty about Hitler. Uh, I suspect that has a, that is a factor in their in their um, in, in their desire to die. And their political system is collapsing. And neither, except for Great Britain, uh, there is nothing really, in, the, in, in especially in Germany, there's nothing on the horizon to, to, to take, uh, to move in and actually, actually come out with a program that actually makes sense. We have the only program in Germany. It's a very bizarre feeling for Helga and our people to have the only sane policy in, in, in Europe and be able to talk to a lot of people in high positions about that. But nobody wants to come out and, 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 and work with us, or nobody wants to start their own, uh, you know, independently. It, it's a very strange feeling. Now, in the United States and Italy, it's different. Uh, the U.S. and Italy are, uh, there is an open fight, and there is leadership emerging that is seeking to bring their nations uh, into a, something different, into a new paradigm. In both cases, the influence of the LaRouche movement is very great. So in Italy, the new Italian government that was massively opposed by the European bureaucracy is going to the population saying, we are going to do what FDR did. We're going to develop the South by expanding the industrial north. We are going to work with China in the Belt and Road and in the development of Africa. And uh, this, is very, uh, this is very open and very direct, and uh, we are very, very close to many of the, the new government's intellectual leadership and some of their cabinet members. The new head of the Italian state media is a very close friend and contact of ours. The Chinese, uh, Chinese Global Times is crediting the Italian Children's Institute with having facilitated bringing the Chad Basin African nations together with uh, the Italian design company, which had put together the designs uh, several decades ago, and China. They're crediting the Schiller Institute with having brought them all together. The new Italian government is defying Brussels. It's defying the European Union with an increased expenditure in social programs and an increased deficit, rejecting the austerity on, uh, 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 that, that, they're, uh, that they're being imposed on them. And this is, now, this is now leading to a war between Italy and the European Union. And the first shot in that war against Italy is, is the rating agencies are coming out saying that the Italian debt uh, is greatly uh, reduced in its uh, uh, risk. So they've already started the attack on Italy. What? So they will try to punish Italy. However, Italy is the second largest industrial nation in Europe. It is not Greece. And it's the second largest industrial nation after Germany. Don't you mean fourth, Paul? Huh? Don't you mean fourth? Isn't France and Britain second and third after? No. No. Okay. Italy, Italy didn't, dis didn't do as, as much deindustrialization as Britain and, and France has. It didn't have a magnitude. It didn't have a magnitude. Oh, the industrial not a company. Right. Yeah. One of the key uh, media coordinators for Trump, who handled a lot of his social media, is an Italian who lives in, in Trump Tower in New York, who accompanied Trump to Italy, is in contact with us, as well as our Italian friends. We're, we're, we're beginning to see the beginnings of a, a, of, of a Trump Italian coordination with the Italy becoming uh, the European country that is uh, uh, 
we're going to be working the closest with the United States. And this is very important because Italy can help the U.S. in dealing with Iran and other situations like that. In the Italian situation, we are seeing a rise of support for the government as not have been seen. The Italian politics is, is, is considered, you know, pretty, uh, pretty crazy. I mean, they, it's not very stable, and and people go about their, you know, their day, you know, their life, you know, life goes on, you know. But they're getting a lot of support, and this increased support is based on the optimism toward the future that Italy is, is doing. So there's a certain optimism. And uh, you, you have a combination of two parties. One is a kind of a, a populist, leftist, you know, smorgasbord party that was founded by a convicted criminal who was a, a leading committee in Rio. And so he can't really be in the party. But this party uh, called Five Star Movement is very popular in the South. And then you had a, a, a party popular in the North, which is called the Liga North. And they're the ones that were the actual ideas. And they're the ones that we've been closest to. And they're the ones actually leading the, even though the minority party, they're the ones leading in terms of policy. Now, a similar process is going on in the United States, which I will now try to describe. This is in part also based on the influence of our movement over many decades. And this is not going beyond the hardcore supporters of Trump. Outside of, of these hardcore supporters, we're beginning to get a, a, a change beginning to take place. What is happening through a situation like the Kavanaugh assault is that many people who would not vote Republican at this point, many of whom may have uh, voted for Trump but are not really pro-Trump, are going to vote Republican because they can see the fascism uh, emerging in the Democratic Party, the lynch mob mentality in the, in the fascism in, 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 in the Democratic Party. And this is causing a level of, of, of awareness and thought which had not previously existed, which is beyond the issues and beyond the parties. It is this layer that has been somewhat skeptical about Trump, even though they may have voted for him. The other factor is in the Italian uh, situation is that the last two years, Trump has overturned much of the green restrictions on economic development, and there's been a two billion increase in jobs, and uh, there's a certain remoralization at the at the blue collar level around the, the prospect of increased employment and around the prospect of 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 a, of a future, and. Um, and, and that, that is not reported in the media, that's not visible, but it is, it is occurring in the population. There is a, an underground of uh, expectation and increase of, uh, of, 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 that there has been an increase in, in, in employment and, 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 and consumer confidence and so on and so forth. That's not enough. Now to give you an example of the situation, uh, when uh, Trump was flying over California, he was flying over the, uh, the, the valley there, the main valley, uh, Central Valley, and he saw that there was a lot of brown patches, and he said, are they having a drought? And he was told, no, there's plenty of water, it's just that uh, the environmentalists don't want us to use the water, they want it for the fish and other things, <laughs> and, and, and they won't let us use the water. And Trump said, what? Well, that's going to have to change. So he's now issued an order that the water has to be used for agriculture. The water has to be used for, you know, for, 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 for the people, not, not to, you know, not, not, but they were, most of the water is being sent, is being prevented from being used by the environmentalists. Uh, but that's the kind of thing that he's doing. Now, the most important thing about these, uh, these kind of restrictions that like the ones, like what you just heard from Phil, what you, what you hear in Agenda 21, what you hear about, um, you know, all of these in, in, in restrictions on, on, on constructions, on building, on groundwater, just, it's just massive tying up of bureaucracy and red tape and everything else. Trump is shutting all that down. Uh, 
So, all, so if you're in business or you're a contractor or if you're a worker, this has a big impact on you because you've been laboring for many for a long time now under the under the sense that you can't get anything done, and now things are starting to get done. The things that couldn't get done are starting to be sped up. Uh, so this is, you know, but the, these things have created in, in in the business community and in the small business community and in the general economy a tremendous sense of hopelessness. Just in that respect alone. <clears throat> So along with drug addiction, balancing the budget, uh, you must suffer, etc. The loss of manufacturing jobs, and there, there is an increasing sense of hopelessness. And that sense of hopelessness is the intended result of the educational and culture also, so that the population ultimately surrenders to whatever. So the idea is you create an increasing sense of hopelessness if people, you know, essentially give up or they become crazy or they become criminals or or they become drug addicts or, or whatever. And, uh, and so although this remoralization is still in its very infancy, it is the sense of hopefulness, uh, hopelessness projected on the Trump. It is the sense of hopelessness that people project on the Trump that makes people believe he is just another jerk like everybody else. That he is and he and, and this is and this and this is how they vilify him. He's just a what is he? He's a crazy man, he's an egomaniac, he's all in it for himself, he's a huckster, he's a con man, you know, all of that. Is, but that plays into the actual sense of hopelessness that people have. And all, it's even worse for the people outside the United States, in Canada and, and in uh, Europe, because that's all they see of Trump. They see him as a megalomaniac, a warmonger, a nutcase, a reckless uh, berserker, you know, with nuclear weapons and all of that. That's, that's the image they have of Donald Trump based upon the, the control of the media outside of the United States. But, but what's happening now is that situations like the Kavanaugh affair have shocked people and want, made people wonder why. Why are the Democrats going into a kind of jihad? It was so over the top that it shocked everybody. So there's a shift going on in some of the uh, form and some of the cynical uh, layers in the population who are taking a second look at Trump. Trump is in turn showing more confidence as he exhibited in the Leslie uh, Stahl interview in 60 Minutes, which I recommend it, uh, that people watch it. And uh, He's also showing confidence in the, in the kind of tweets he's, he's giving out. He's, he said that Republicans, and this is for the campaign, Republicans support a health care program insurance where all pre-existing conditions are covered. That's not true. It's not the case. And then saying, if any Republican does it, well, they will after they talk to me. Now that's confidence. That's showing confidence. Now, the as the he he was he, she went after him on 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 the climate change, and he not only did he stand firm, but he said, you know, you don't know, and you know, this, this man may go over one. You, you can't show it. that can't be proven, and he stood firm, and this is causing this this very fact. This was on national television in the United States on 60 Minutes. This has had an impact on 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 the on the people fighting the, um, fighting the Greens. This has had a big impact. The fact that he stood firm and, and took her down, you know, didn't, didn't, you know, uh, didn't go. Any, and then he said, yeah, scientists have political agendas. <laughs> scientists have political agendas. Yeah, yeah, of course they do, especially when, there's all, when the grant money is involved. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And uh, so, so, so he's showing a certain uh, kind of confidence uh, 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 which is important because, because it's, it's the wavering, it's the wavering, because, he, because if he doesn't show confidence, then, then, he, then people will not come out of their, come out of their uh, boroughs, you know? They won't, they won't join the, the fight. They won't, they won't, and a, a, a commander has to show confidence, otherwise, you know, you, you forget it. You know, he can't be, 
you can't be, uh, you know, temporizing. You know, a certain trunk, it doesn't work in this situation. Will this be enough to keep a Republican Congress in place? Uh, we don't know. Trump is out there campaigning and will campaign to the end, drawing larger and larger crowds. Regardless, he has indicated he is prepared to uh, work, work with a Democratic Congress. So the whole time he's doing this, he's saying to, to uh, Pelosi and, and Schumer, the, the two leading, uh, work with me, work with me. Let's, let's work on the immigration thing. We can write along and have it done in an hour and straighten this thing out. And no, we don't want to work with you. No, we don't want to work with you. But he's, he's, he's not like doing this, I'm going to crush you routine. He's doing the, let's work, work with me, work with me, work with me. So that's, a, that's important. So he's not going to go away even if the, even if the Congress uh, goes Democrat. He's going to split the Democrats. He's going to try to split the Democrats and get a, get a chunk of them working with him. Uh, and so forth. And, and if he does it that way, and he does it in a forceful way, he will still have a growing army of supporters since it was the Republican Party that lost, would have lost, not Trump. In other words, if, if the Republicans don't make it in the, uh, make it in the majority, say in the majority, he's going he's gonna to blame the Republicans, not himself, that's for sure. So, so anyway. Because he's not a Republican anyhow. <laughs> so he's not, so he's, he's going to play it hard, you know, he's going to play it that way. So, and lastly, there is the unraveling coup, the declassification threat, and uh, most of all, uh, the exposure of the British. But that is being exposed by many based on our work. Uh, there's many people coming out now saying it's the British. We're not the only ones saying this now. But it is the higher level that we must go uh, now. We must go to a higher level. And in Aristotle, the world is fixed. The rulers and the rule. Everything has its place. In Plato, in, demonstration, in a demonstration in one of the dialogues, the Mino dialogue, that the slave boy can make a discovery, the world is an unfolding potential. The British Empire is nothing but the continuous assault from birth through the educational system, the culture, and beyond to denigrate the, that potential and in the destruction of human beings convince everyone that that is how the world is. Once people start to begin to break out of this, the empire will escalate, as they did in the Kavanaugh case. But it failed. It also failed in the escalation around the 60-minute interview. One example is, this, nothing, is that nothing of... One example is that nothing of what we are talking about in the midterm, and about Trump is being reported outside the U.S. And the freak out on Trump is so massive that Facebook is now shutting down tens of thousands, or, or thousands, if not tens of thousands, of sites. That's a fact. Yeah. Yeah. Facebook and, and 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 YouTube, and that's because that's because they don't they're, they're, it's, it's out of control. But the Belt and Road process is on the way and will not be stopped at this point. Now on Canada, I want to say something about Canada and all of this. Uh, there is a response to the situation as in Europe and the, in the U.S. Uh, it appears to me at this point that the emergence of the People's Party of um, Maxime Bernier can be seen as such a response. It's parody, at least it's a parody. And when you consider that the elections in Canada are one year away, October 21st, 2019, or earlier if the Liberal Party calls an earlier election, that's a lot of time to actually, um, uh, uh, for, for something to emerge in Canada, something to emerge that challenges the, the old order. There's a lot of time for something here in Canada to develop at the federal level. So our people are looking at the People's Party. It is, um, it is raising many of the issues 
that are being raised in Europe and in the United States. It's, it's, it's also raising the questions of what is in the interest of Canadians. And it's also, as far as I know, not, not going along with the green agenda. It's opposing the green agenda, as far as I know. But that has to be looked into uh, by uh, our people here uh, more deeply to see what our role might be and how we might if, or might not intervene into their, into, their, uh, into their gestation and their development. Uh, so that's the end. I, that didn't take very long, but uh, I wanted to just give that sense to you that this thing is moving. Um, in the case of uh, Trump is going to Houston on Monday for a rally in a 20,000 uh, 20, person, not far from where Keisha's running for office. And we're, we're going to have a huge contingency there getting on our stuff. And what, what's been going on is we've been going to all these Trump rallies and getting out thousands of leaflets, getting hundreds of contacts. And this is having an impact. And we are telling people, this is the leaflet you need to organize. Because all these people are coming to see Trump, but they're not organizing really for anything. And so we're actually, actually taking advantage, at least the action principle, of being at all these rallies and being there. And actually, with everything that we have, two people can get out thousands of leaflets. And four people can get out. I can attest that Paul can get out 1,200 leaflets in three hours. I was amazed. I've seen and, him do it. How would they end up on the street? Uh, <laughs> in so, people's hands. They might end up on the street, but you make so, sure they get it. So anyhow, but but so so this is this is what we're doing. And um so um the question the question the huge question that's now emerging is okay, so what is Trump going to do about the financial situation? What is Trump going to do about the banks? What is Trump going to do about all of this stuff? Because it's, it's not going to go away. Uh, the, uh, London, uh, there was a meeting of the Bank of England saying that, that, the, that the next major threat to the financial system are what they call leverage loans that, that corporations and take out. And then these are too risky to be held by banks, so they package them in in uh, collateralized debt, like the, like the mortgages, and then they, they insure them with uh, credit default swaps, like they did the, uh, the, uh, the mortgage-backed securities. Yeah. So this is, this, is, uh, this is deja vu, 2008 all over again. And so all of this is happening. The interest rates are being raised to try to hurt Trump uh, and the midterm elections, but it's also being raised against the the uh, developing countries to, to, to screw up their ability to have uh, to get in on the Belt and Road. But these are the punitive uh, measures being taken by the financial system, but that financial system <coughs> is going to have to be dealt with. And this brings us to 